Welcome everyone to this first training, IP training of diversity on infection prevention. I'm Claire Kosravi and today we'll talk about introduction of microbiology and I'm the infection prevention expert uh, within Europe from diversity. So let me share my screen and we will start in a few seconds. So as I said today, the first training module on infection prevention will talk about introduction to microbiology. So just a little bit about me. I have a doctoral degree in microbiology and molecular biology. Within diversity, I'm responsible for the full range um, of disinfectant of the infection prevention portfolio. I provide um, advice and expertise on microbiology and application of the European norms. I also present at diverse infection prevention conference and events, and I monitor the scientific literature related to infection prevention. I also deliver training programs for sales, technical managers, application specialists at a European level. And today we will start with the first module talking about microbiology. So microbiology is a highly interdisciplinary realm of study. It is linked with many other um, science such as genetics, social science, ecology, structural biology, organic chemistry, biochemistry, but also sustainability, climate change, public health and safety and development. So it is, it is important to understand the microbiology language. So the classes of microorganisms we are concerned with are studied as part of the field of microbiology. So we will talk today in this training module about three classes of microorganisms. Bacteria, fungi with the yeast and the mold, and viruses. We all have one to two kilos of bacteria in and on us, which is very impressive. But the important part is to analyze the one that counts and to understand them. But first, what is a pathogen? So a pathogen is a microorganism that causes disease. So we'll talk about bacteria, viruses, and fungi, but there are many more. There are about 1,400 pathogens, but the key is to focus on those that count. So what is microbiology? So microbiology is the study of micro microscopic organism, tiny, tiny. So we'll have bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoa. So most of them are beneficial to us. In human, bacteria helps our digestion. In plants, bacteria are responsible for the nitrogen fixation. In animals, it helps cellulose digestion. But also microorganisms are used in diverse industries. For example, in bioethanol industry, because for example, fungi are able to degrade plant biomass. But we need to focus on the major families. So the groupings that are on this slide are all relevant when we are talking about disinfection. Different businesses deal with a group of organisms in addition to those specific ones. It is vital to become familiar with those groups and class. So on the left side, we have the bacteria, where we have four subclasses which are relevant for us to understand. So the gram-positive bacteria, the gram-negative bacteria, we'll talk about those in this first training module. And then we have two specific classes of bacteria, mycobacteria and the bacteria that produce spores, such as Clostridium difficile or Bacillus subtilis, for example. The second family that we will discuss is fungi with the yeast and the mold. And lastly, we will discuss about viruses with non-envelope viruses and the envelope viruses. So all those different microorganisms are important to understand uh, when we talked about disinfection and infection prevention. In this schema, you can see the different sizes of microorganisms. So what is nice to see is the viruses are the smallest ones of all the microorganisms, and it requires specific um, equipment to be able to uh, see them, such as electron microscope. But let's start with the first group, bacteria. So you can see a schematic picture of one type of bacteria, but of course there are many more. We'll discuss that in more detail. But bacteria are present everywhere. Most do not cause disease in humans, but 1% of the strain do. 
some are part of our body's defense system. So they have the general genetic material, so a cell wall, membrane, a cytoplasm, sometimes a flagellum that helps them to move in the environment. And how bacteria are spread in the environment. So bacteria are spread from staff to visitor continuously through touching surfaces, skin cells, breathing, coughing, and sneezing. Bacteria are self-sufficient, so they only require um, water, nutrient, oxygen, the right temperature, and a right pH. The hierarchy of classification. Of course, there are many different types of bacteria out there, and they are all belong to the prokaryote domain. And one of the bacteria that we all know and that we hear a lot are Staphylococcus aureus. So the Staphylococcus is the genus, and the species is aureus. So, but what what does that mean? So there is a meaning behind this name. So Staphylo is for the bunch of grapes. Cocus, it's because they look like really round cells. And aureus is for the color of this bacteria, so the golden uh, color. But as we said before, there are two types of bacteria, so the gram-positive and the gram-negative. So the gram-negative are harder to kill than the gram-positive. And the differences are mostly due to their outer layer. So the structure of the membranes is different. And by a simple staining method in the lab, we can differentiate the gram-positive from the gram-negative. There are many gram-negative that are of concern in different sectors, also in healthcare, but only few gram-positive are of concern. In this slide, you can see six important bacteria. So Acinotobacter bomani, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Enterobacteriae, Helicobacter pylori, Staphylococcus aureus, and Enterococcus. So we see that many illnesses that you are aware uh, can be caused by more than one bacteria, especially illness like pneumonia or meningitis, and, um, and some of them are really uh, threatening. The second class that I would like to uh, discuss in this training module are fungi. So mold and yeast are both fungi, but they are two closely related organisms and they belong in the same uh, kingdom, but there are differences between yeast and mold. So mold are multicellular, so that means they are producing a multicellular organism, which is called hyphae, and yeast are unicellular. Fungi are usually found on dead decaying matter near water and the transmission is not generally associated with people but rather with an hygienic environment indoors and outdoors environment fungi like bacteria are also self-sufficient so that means they only need water nutrients oxygen the right ph and temperature and common fungal pathogen can include candida albicans aspergillus niger also called Aspergillus brasiliensis and trichophyton. So how, how do they look? So you can see several pictures on this slide um, with several diseases caused by fungi. So Candida albicans with the thrush, Aspergillus niger responsible of the mildew, Tinea corpus and also trichophyton with the atlas foot. The last class that I would like to discuss with you are the viruses. So viruses are generally grouped by their size and whether the viruses has an outer envelope. So we have the small non-enveloped viruses. So an easy mechanism to remember is that non-enveloped are not easy to kill. And then the second subclass are large and enveloped viruses. So enveloped are easy to kill. So unlike bacteria and fungi that we discussed previously, the transmission of the viruses is usually associated with uh, also an hygienic uh, human activities, but they are not self-sufficient. So that means they require the host for survival. 
The common viral pathogen includes hepatitis, norovirus, influenza causing flu, HIV, rhinovirus, but also, of course, SARS-CoV-2. So we're going to have a training module on SARS-CoV-2 that I really invite you to follow. But as we discussed, not all layer protect. So the small non-enveloped viruses are harder to kill by disinfection than the big envelope viruses like SARS-CoV-2. So it's important really to understand those two types of viruses because it's also linked with the European norms and the capability of a disinfectant to remove either the big envelope viruses only or both type of viruses. So I really invite you to also follow our training module on the European norm and the efficacy of disinfectant. In this slide, you can see a schematic picture of both type of viruses. On the left side, an envelope viruses with the outer layer with the capsid and the envelope. And then on the right side, the non-envelope viruses. So you can see without this envelope around it. And of course, the reference um, non-envelope viruses are norovirus, poliovirus, and adenovirus. And for the envelope virus, as example, we'll have coronaviruses, hepatitis, influenza viruses, HIV. So there are over 5,000 species that have been identified and they are really diverse and they can be made up of either DNA or RNA. And they are can be surrounded by a protective coat or protein called a capsid, like you can see on this picture. But how easy are they to kill via disinfection? So this is a summary table of what we discuss uh, in this training module. So on the bottom of the table, we have the virus, the envelope virus. The reference viruses is Vaccinia virus. Then if we move um, higher on the chart, we have the gram-positive bacteria with Staphylococcus aureus, for example. Then we have the yeast with Candida albicans as a reference um, organism, then the gram-negative bacteria, then the fungi with the Asperger's brasiliensis, the non-envelope viruses with poliovirus, norovirus, adenovirus, are, they are the three of them reference viruses, mycobacteria, and the bacteria spores that we did discuss, didn't discuss in this training module, but are very difficult also to remove uh, via disinfection. So the product higher on the chart are harder to kill via disinfection than those lower on the chart. If a disinfectant kills things higher on the chart, we can generally assume that they will kill the microorganism lower on the chart. So this was the first training module of the infection prevention and training series of diversity. I really invite you to also follow the next training module where we will discuss about European norms and disinf disinfection efficacy and also virucidal efficacy. If you have any question, please refer to your diversity representative. Thank you for your attention.